Welcome, this is Andy Bennett of Great Plains Scrabble. Today we're going to review the Genesis Vagabond. As an introduction, Genesis is a European brand in this case, not the Genesis bikes you see at Walmart. It's a mid-range brand found throughout Europe, but not sold in the U.S. The Vagabond specifically is often called a monster cross bike, but you also hear people referring to it as a touring bike and even as a drop bar mountain bike, which I don't think is a really good fit for it. It is a steel frame bike with a steel fork. It weighs 28 pounds without bottle cages and pedals, so not a lightweight bike. It fits 29 or 2.1 tires, both in front and back, with significant clearance to spare. You could probably go up another size in tires, but would have very limited clearance if you did that. When you look at the geometry of the frame, it's generally quite relaxed, especially compared to a typical road bike. It's more in the endurance road bike category as far as geometry, maybe even a little bit more relaxed than that, but not nearly as slack as a mountain bike. It has a relatively long wheelbase for its size. The frame has mounts for three bottles, uh, one under the down tube, one on top of the down tube, and one on the seat tube, although two of those require relatively smaller bottles. It has mounts for fenders and racks, um, only a single mount on the front fork though, so you can't put a traditional bottle cage there. When you look at the overall fit and finish of the bike, both when it was new and now, it is extremely good. Paint quality is excellent. It is worn extremely well over the three years I've owned the bike. When we look at the cockpit of the bike, this is one place where there's some changes from the factory stock. The bars originally would have been Genesis branded flared bars. On this bike, they've been replaced with FSA compact road bars. It has micro shift bar end shift levers. The brake levers are Promax. The hoods are relatively narrow compared to what I'm familiar with on most bikes. When you look at the stem, it's a Genesis branded 100 millimeter stem. I have it as 15 degrees up right now. Obviously, you can flip it over to get 15 degrees down if you're looking for a little bit more aggressive position. When we look at the gearing on the bike, it's set up with a mountain bike double in front, 4028 chain rings. The crank bottom bracket rings are all Samox branded aluminum and seem to be quite good quality. It has a Shimano Dior front derailleur. In the back it's a 10-speed Dior rear derailleur with a clutch. The cassette is a Shimano 11 to 36 and with this combination you do have quite a wide gear range which I think is a very favorable thing to have on a gravel slash all-road bike. The bike has TRP Spire cable actuated disc brakes both in front and back with 160 millimeter rotors. They are post mount rather than the more up to date flat mount but it makes absolutely no difference in how they function and these are excellent brakes under almost all conditions. The wheel set of the bike uses Alex Volar 2.1 rims, 32 spoke. They have Joystick ball bearing hubs. Uh, the rims are tubeless compatible and they use quick release. They have been absolutely rock solid. They're not expensive or high end wheels, but I've had no broken spokes. I've had to make no adjustments. They are still perfectly true after 8,500 miles. Tire wise, it originally came with 29 or 2.1 Kenda small block eights. Primarily, though, I've run Panaracer Gravel King SK 700 by 43s, and those are kind of the, the happy medium for me on this bike. The saddle and the seat post are both Genesis branded items. The post is aluminum. The saddle is a Genesis Road Comfort and has been an excellent saddle for me, one of the most comfortable saddles I've ever ridden. So the most important part with any bike though is how does this bike ride? I would describe it as like a very relaxed road bike. It's not like a mountain bike, 
it's like an endurance road bike or maybe even a little bit more relaxed. It's a relatively upright body position that's great for long rides. The handling is sharp enough, but it's not twitchy like a aggressive road bike setup. It's extremely stable on almost all terrain. One way I describe it is it's a bike that's not going to wear you out riding it. I'm by no means a bike racer, but I had, do ride some of the local events. I've ridden two Land Run, now Mid-Souths, here in Stillwater. For that kind of an event, this is a great bike for me. It has that wide gear range. I can get up any hill. I can go up Brethren Hill on the most recent version of Land Run. And I can spin when I'm bonking or tired out there near 100 miles. When you look at the gearing, at 80 RPM in the highest gear, you'd be running 24.1 miles an hour. I can't ride that speed consistently on pavement, much less gravel, so that's not an issue. The other side of it is in the lowest gear, 80 RPM is 5.2 miles an hour, which is, as I say, a real advantage on hilly terrain or when you're getting really tired on the rolling terrain in our area. Some final thoughts on the bike. Where does this bike fit? To me, it is an all-purpose bike. It really is an all-road bike. I could live with this as my only bike, and it would be certainly the bike I would pick as my only bike if I had to. The best fit for it is long-distance riding on mixed surfaces, commuting. It does have a relatively upright riding position that gives you a little bit more comfort for those kind of uses. When you look at availability of this bike, the current model of it has very similar geometry but a very different build kit. However, I have seen online there are some of the older model bikes that are quite similar to this still available as new and you may find them used. If you're in Europe, they're going to be quite a bit more common but they do occasionally make it to the U.S. and as the previous owner of the bike did, you can import them into the U.S. from Europe if you're interested in this bike. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, please click the like button or the thumbs up button. That does help other people find the video. And if you're interested in the content I'm producing, please subscribe so you can see more of it in the future. Thank you.